Ah, hi everyone, welcome back to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd, and as you can tell, well, unfortunately, I did not bring any of my camera equipment here, so, or at least any of my tripods or anything like that, so, and the one thing I did bring, I totally forgot the mount for it, so we're just gonna wing it with holding the phone. So not a big deal. Um, there's some really cool stuff in this auction, and, uh, well, I'm, I'm just gonna show you guys the highlights of this, more or less. Um, or just the, the really cool stuff, right, that's in here. Um, so anyways, like, yeah, if we, uh, go along here, you know, you know, it's just, like, the generic stuff, whatever, you always see one of these Cadillacs in here for some reason. I don't know, it's, it, it, it blows my mind of how many caddies, like, this sort of style, like, these 90s Cadillacs that you see in here. Because with the North Stars, though, they are prone to blowing head gaskets and stuff like that, so you do have to be careful with those. Um, you know, you get a lot of these square body Chevys and stuff like that, and GMCs. Um, yeah, th this is one of these things where I'm not, because normally I'd go really in-depth with this stuff, and, ooh, you know what? I won't much to say about this Chrysler 200, though, because you know what? Chrysler 200, they're not a great car. However, these rims are freaking sweet. Check those out. Uh, Top Gear wheels, and, ooh, look how bad uh, I think that wheel's bent, because look at how many weights are on that. Ooh, but... Cool wheels, though. I like those. Oh, they're sweet. Uh, like Chrysler 200, they're basically on a Fiat, and they have the uh, 2 liter. I believe they can get the 2.4 Tiger Shark and a couple other things, but regardless. Ooh, here we go. I remember seeing this. So, this is a uh, 68 or 72 Chevrolet, and like, it's quite beat. It's a C10. Um, You know, and it's just, oh god, this thing is hurting for certain, but. It's solid, I will say that. Just dented everywhere, right? And definitely a major project. Now what's interesting is, until uh, the square body Chevy came out in 1973, standard was a wood bed like this, because you can see some of the wood here. And they would just be lined, like you can see it in between there, right? And it would go in between all these slats. But, um, once the, uh, you could get an, like, it was an option for the metal bed. So, that is something you can do, but, you know, back then, however, again, it was optional, right? You know, take a look at the interior, and again, pretty gutted in here. You got no gauges, no radio, no controls. Yeah, it might not even have a motor in it, does it? Ah, uh, no, there's no motor in there. So, there you go. This was a 350, and, uh, Pretty cool looking truck, but again, it's a lot of work. But cool truck and solid too. So that could actually go for a decent amount of money just because it's not really rusty. It's just dented to hell. But if we continue on here, ooh, check that thing out. That thing is sweet. That is a blazer. Square body blazer, uh, I think 1980. Ooh, what is that license plate up front? Uh, Because we have 2007, Illinois. So, Illinois truck from last registered in 07 by the front. Now, let's see. Is there probably not a plate on the back? Oh, there is a plate. Okay, so this has been Alberta registered last in 2012. There you go. So, um, so that is one thing to check with these because sometimes the plates are still on them and you can see that. So this was this is an American truck, so it's got a title. Um, that's something you have to be aware of because here in Canada, we don't use titles. Uh, we just sell off or go off a bill of sale system, but that thing is freaking sweet. Big old four by four. Love it. Um, continue on here. If we go to, now there's a couple other really cool things like for example, not the Lincoln Town cars are kind of neat, but actually this Toyota here, this thing, so 4x4, four four, um, honestly, not really rusty, like a little bit, but not terrible. Uh, let's see, it's an 85. Yeah, so this is the one with the head gasket and the timing chain were replaced in 2021. E-brake doesn't work, but you know what? That's totally fine. And yeah, like, check this thing out. It's even got, like, some stuff back here, too, like, uh, steering box and, um, drive shaft, a couple of drive shafts back here, a couple of rads. 
So, it has some spare parts, definitely. And, oh, this one looks like... No, it's not unlocked. It looks like it's unlocked, but it's not. So, I mean, that's fine. But the hood is popped. So, let's take a look at, actually, under the hood of this thing. Because if it's as clean as the outside looks, that'll be a nice little, uh, nice little get. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so... Here is your uh, 22R underneath the hood here. You can see, actually it says right up there, 22RC. A little four banger. Uh, very dependable engines, honestly. They don't really break. And this is back when Toyota was just, they were tanks, right? You didn't really have to worry about anything. So, um, you know, and actually these have gotten pretty desirable. So yeah, very cool rig. I love those old Toyotas. Uh, here we have a K10. Actually, is it the K10? Because it doesn't have the manual locking hubs up front. I don't know. Do we have an easy way to tell? Is there a differential? There is a differential. So this is a 4x4. So this is a K10. Yeah. Chevy K10 is a 78. So there you go. So second to the last year for actually, because the one thing is you can tell the 70s ones from the 80s ones by the round headlights. They started these in 1973 with this style of headlight it went until 1979 1980 they changed it so to the square headlights and this thing it's in pretty good shape you know you got the little skulls in the interior and stuff yeah four by four automatic that's what it says here new rad and camshaft uh recent recharge for the ac so this is an ac truck too very nice Ooh, i like this tunnel cover honestly so good shape. One little tear here and one little tear over there. But other than that, very good shape. This is a very beautiful truck. Ah, we'll see what this one goes for. Um, if we continue on here, you know, got a hail damaged Impala there. Or uh, actually, that might be a Malibu. We're all right with this. They're similar. Um, here we go. Nice. Uh, this is 90 or late 80s EFI. And hey, look at that. Somebody shot that. That's a bullet hole. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's a bullet hole and it, it just spidered out like that. Um, oh, it's a stick. Nice. And I can't tell what the odometer says, but you know what? This truck, rusty and everything, yeah, but not terrible. And this does have the dual fuel tanks in it. So. Um, that is something with the, this era of truck, as they do, and it's got trailer hookup. So, that's always nice. Wiring probably has to be redone for it, but... And too bad these are hubcaps, because they actually look really killer, but yeah, those, those are just hubcaps on those wheels. But they look good. So, yeah, spiffy little truck. Um, yeah, I got another square, or OBS there. Uh, wow, that's not something you see. So this generation of Toyota Sienna. <laughs> this is the uh, 90s, I believe, maybe early 2000s. I don't know, what year is this one? Nothing really special about these, it's just seeing them. 99 Toyota Sienna. So that's kind of neat. And just again, you don't really see these, right? Um, this generation, you see the later ones. That's really cool to see. But once we continue on here, we'll see some really cool stuff. Because again, I see these trucks all the time. I, they don't really do anything for me. It's the old weird stuff that does stuff for me. Like, you can see a beetle over here, which is really, really neat. Um, you know, because yeah, I think, yeah, that, that, that's the coolest thing in this row. Yeah, there we go. Now they're, they're just leaving here. So here we go. So check out this old beetle. Now, ah, it's a little beat up. It does have a sunroof. That's cool, metal sunroof. Yeah, like, it's quite hammered in this corner. But, as long as it's not bent underneath. If the belly pan is not bent or rusted, this is actually a good little project. But if they are, you are so screwed. And like, yeah, the, the sunroof is rusted. Um, you know, but a little more rust here as well. Now this is 70s Volkswagen. And with a dual exhaust out back, even though it's Really, they just kind of loop around and go in, right? It, it's only a... Uh, these are a flat four, so that actually the uh, pistons go that way and that way on either side. They call these like a boxer four. 
as well. Porsche had the same design, but also bear in mind, Volkswagen owns Porsche. So, and the first Porsche, the 356, was essentially just a modified Beetle, but very modified, but still. You can see the Be Beetle DNA in the 356. Now that's cool. A Chevy Tracker. I thought it was Geo for a second. That's kind of neat, you know? Nice camo paint with the big tires on it and stuff like that. This is what most people do to these. And uh, yeah, it's definitely 4x4. Automatic though. Oh, but that's okay. Um, sometimes it's nice just to be able to throw it in gear and just drive, right? But when you're off-road, it's actually... One of the things is when you have a stick, you get so much more control over it. So um, that is one thing with off-roaders. When you have a stick off-roader, it typically brings a premium. Speaking of bringing a premium, Toyota Land Cruiser, and there is the thing right here, diesel, right? So this has the ultimate unkillable engine that like when they released this, cause here's the thing, Top Gear did a thing. Ooh, this one's unlocked. Yeah, so there you go. So inside actually, it's pretty neat, these, these things. Um, they're just sort of your rudimentary SUV. They became more luxury later on, but at this point, not entirely. And oh, we have an air compressor on board. Or, or is that vacuum? That's vacuum. Okay, never mind. That's a vacuum gauge. Um, we also have so a degree gauge. So that is, I'm not sure what that's for, but very cool. And a truck using their Jake brake. <laughs> But look at this thing. It's just incredible, right? Now it does have some tears in the seats you can see here, whatever else. And this is really, you need to reupholster this entire seat. The other ones you might just be able to make do with just new sort of material. And oh my God, look, look. Listen to how good that closes. Like, this thing's fairly solid. Now it's rusty, but solid underneath. Because if you can open and close the doors nine times out of 10, it's actually a good vehicle. Sometimes that's a little deceptive though, I will admit. And oh, this came from Grand Prairie. See, Windsor Ford, Grand Prairie. These things are so, so, so cool. And like I said, they're indestructible. Top Gear actually took a Toyota Hilux, so not the uh, the SUV version, but a pickup truck. And they actually um, put it through a major torture test and it did not die. They kept getting it to start without any brand new parts. They just cleaned stuff up and used basic tools and they kept getting it running. So yeah, just absolutely incredible engines those. And very unkillable for everything else on those. Now, here's something else. So this is an 87 Mercury Cougar Anniversary Edition. Um, these are quite neat. So like you can see all the stuff here. This does have a five liter. Only 68,000 original kilometers on it and just like a bunch of stuff that's been done to it, whatever else it needs, an oil change and a couple other little things. But wow, this thing is incredible. I love these. I really do. See, there we go. 20th anniversary right there. 1987. Like, it's kind of interesting. So because for the longest time, a staple of the Fords was this sort of formal roof line, right? You, you essentially have, it's not a straight up and down wind or back window, but it's pretty close. And yeah, the Cougar is the only one that kept that because the T-Bird went away from that. So did the Lincoln Mark series. They, they were more of a sort of fastback type idea and the same as the T-Bird. So this is very cool to see. And I'm curious what this is going to go for because that is beautiful, beautiful condition. Now here's something that my friend uh, Nat would like, which if you want to follow her YouTube channel, actually, it's Water and Wrenches. So she does stuff not only with uh, her truck, because she has a Ranger similar to this. Um, ooh, this has a car light windshield in it. So that's cool. If it was ever replaced, it was done with a f sort of factory approved windshield. That's cool. Unfortunately, it's cracked now, but that is cool to see that little sticker. But anyway, so yeah, she has one of these and she does stuff um, actually with water safety, whatever else, and just follow it along and fighting bugs and stuff like that. It's a pretty neat concept. And then she also rinses on her truck too. Um, she's a good friend of mine. And yeah, seeing this. Oh, cool. So this actually came from Olds. 
So this is a local truck. Pretty neat. Now it's a 4x4 tailgate. Is this thing 4x4? Oh, it is too. Nice. So this is the spec you want. Now I wonder what motor's in it. Probably a 2.9 is my guess. I don't even know what year this thing is. And it's got the up-trim dash with the wood on it. That is cool. Very, 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 very cool. I've uh, got a topper on it and everything. I mean, it's not going to sell for a lot of money, but I'm curious to see what this goes for too. Um, I'm not buying anything this auction. I'm just... I don't have any money right now. I'm just perusing. Now, here's another Land Cruiser diesel. See, this is the really cool lane. You'll see why when I get to the end. And then I'm going to circle back around. So, another Land Cruiser diesel. I can't remember. One of them doesn't run. I can't remember which one. But regardless, these, again, can sell for a lot of money. And this one... Oh, the door handle's broken off there. So, ha! Huh, can't open the door. But, uh... Yeah, this one actually has a nicer interior on it. I will say that. I like the pattern more and stuff like that too, but yeah, just wow. Very rusty though. These, because uh, one thing is when these were shipped over from Japan, or at least, I'm not sure if the Land Cruiser was, but there was a lot of these that were shipped over, like a lot of the old Toyotas and Hondas and stuff like that were shipped over from Japan. But the problem is, and, and this was notorious for thousands of years. Japan has had bad quality steel. And that's one of the reasons why, actually. Here you go, you get a bit of a history lesson. Uh, when it comes to uh, the samurai and the samurai swords, the reason why they were folded over, folded over, folded over is to add strength because the... Um, and they had to add up so many layers, whatever else, and that's why, like, such high craftsmanship in those samurai swords. But the thing is with those samurai swords, it's like, yeah, it's because they were poor quality steel, where Europe didn't have to do that, nor did North America later on. So just, it's just the metallurgy of the area, unfortunately. So really cool to see those, though. And there, there's your little history lesson. And now you'll see some other stuff really cool back here, which I'll show you guys that once I... Swing around, you know, actually, this is kind of cool. So this is a GMC S15 Jimmy. Um, they're pretty neat. You do see them around, but they're not as popular as they once were, especially in the square body, right? So 4.3, 326K, got some new parts in it, whatever else you can kind of see here. And it's a 94. Oh, it's a late one. So there you go. That is really, really cool. And you see all these cool stickers on the back whatever else <laughs> look at this badge my gm truck that's awesome i love it um we continue on here ah starting to get hot starting to fade and i still have the car show to get to but here you go now this is a dodge raider which if you don't know what these are it's a rebadged mitsubishi pajero and it's left-hand drive right so these were made for the north american market and, you know, they had the, the Ram on it, too. And, yeah, because this is when uh, they had a big partnership. Let's see, is it unlock? Oh, it is, too. Um, and it's a stick, five-speed. Got really cool. Like, check out these gauges and, like, the, the coloring of them. You know, that orange and everything? That is neat, right? These are so cool. And you got an inclinometer. So this tells you the angle of where you're at um, with stuff. That's cool. These were an ultimate off-road machine because um, Mitsubishi with the Pajero, they actually, um, it even says her hair, look, like, imported for Dodge, right? Pretty cool. Like, and you don't see these very often, but these dominated safari rallies. At least the Mitsubishis did, right? And you can tell this one has a little bit of that with, uh, that's actually just PVC piping for a snorkel, but it works, right? That actually does... Like, that would be functional. It just looks kind of funny, right? Look, looks a little hokey, but it's functional, right? And you can tell with this vehicle because it's just a little bit of a beater or whatever else, so who cares, right? Just send it. And, like, it's got big old dent here and some rust on the door and stuff like that. Some rust on the recorder. But really, look at what you're getting for your money here. This is so cool. And these are a very, very um, dependable off-roader. So if you're ever looking for something unique for an off-roader, consider a Dodge Raider. Now we move on to, I'm, I'm wanting that, that Cortina, but another Toyota, this is a Toyota Hardbody, 
and extra cab. You know, it's, uh, well, it's got the original jack in it and stuff like that. Um, has 343,000 kilometers and uh, smells like every old Toyota. You know, but super cool, manual windows and everything. Like, nothing really to break. It's got some Dodge, uh, you know, floor mats, but, you know, and this one. Now, it's pretty common to see these with a flat deck like this put on the back. Reason being is these boxes rot out so bad that they just literally will fall apart on you going down the road. So, this one's actually quite nicely made. I'm not going to lie. A lot of these are kind of hokey. This one's good. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of this, to be honest. I like, you know, the wheels on it and everything, too. They're just cheap little wheels, but still, they look good on it. So, yeah, that's another really cool ride. Now, this is the one I want. So this is a 1968 Ford Cortina GT. So I didn't see these. Now, see, this is something that this is why you look at the auction, because you did not see these flames on it in the pictures. So, ah, uh, let's see. Please tell me it's unlocked. No, it's locked. Oh, man. That's okay. I do. Mm, God, I want this so bad. And like, look, so this is from Calgary originally. You can tell just, hey, look. Chinook Chrysler Dodge and the fact that a university kid owned it because University of Calgary, right? Super, super neat. And just something you never see. And this thing really does not have much for rust at all. You know, like it needs a lot of work. It's been off the road for, well, that says 1987. So that's a good indication, right? Uh, but, oh man. Wow, trucks. But you know, these are like, because these are a European Ford. We didn't get them over here. And is this door unlocked? Oh, this door is unlocked. Okay, here we go. So you got the stick. You got the awesome wood wheel on it. All those gauges on it and everything. Got, eh, I recognize that radio. Ford used that radio for a long time. And just, oh my God. Like, look at this. Got the I like the uh, the speakers in the C pillars. That's a nice touch. I think that's a, uh, a custom thing, but that is so darn cool. Like, look at these seats. They look like straight out of like a Mustang or a Maverick, but it's probably original. And like, oh my god, this thing is a peach. And just listen to that. Oh god, this thing's so solid. Now, actually, now is this popped or no? No, it's not. Okay, it's just a little bent. That's why. So this is, these have a 1600 cc engine and this one still has the engine, which I don't know how to pop that hood. Ah, uh, I don't know how to pop this hood properly. Like it is popped, but, uh, figured out another time, but honestly just oh, so cool. And like, you just don't see these ever. And it's got these awesome, Old school, very dry rotted tires. Like you would not want to drive these on the road at all. You'd get this thing towed. But man, super, uh, you know, winter tires on it and everything. Oh. We shall see if I can figure out a way to hold this thing. I want it so bad. Um, and it's just as good as it looked in the pictures. Other than these, these kind of funny little, little, little flames on it, but. Super cool. Now it's been off the road for 30 years. So this would make an awesome Will It Run series. 100% this car would. And I would sell my car, like, I'd sell my convertible for this. Absolutely, it's a Cortina. You know, but I'm not going to, but I could. Now here we have a Sunbeam Minx, which this is, uh, Sunbeam was a British car manufacturer. Uh, they're most legendary known for the Sunbeam Tiger, which had a Ford 260 and 289 engine in them. Um, sourced by Carroll Shelby. And, you know, they were honestly just a really cool little rocket of a convertible. But this is their family car sort of thing. Very small. Like, it's it's a four-door, but it's about the size of the Cortina, actually. Um, now, they're not parked straight, but they're pretty close in length. Now, let's see. Is it unlocked? Oh, it is, too. Wow, that is so cool, right? 
and you got the handbrake down here. Right? Now, this may have been before British Leyland, because I think this is a 66. So, and I don't know if Sunbeam became British Leyland or not, or if they just died, because I don't really know much of the Sunbeams other than the Tigers, right? And the Tigers they made in the 60s. And then what's interesting is um, Chrysler, I know Chrysler acquired Sunbeam. And they still assembled the, the Sunbeam Tiger with the Ford V8 after Chrysler acquired them. But that's about all I know about these. So just super, super cool. Now you might look at that and go, that kind of looks like an Anglia. And to be honest, it's got some of that Anglia styling, like from, have you ever watched Harry Potter? Very similar, but not the same because that was a Ford Anglia, not a Sunbeam Minx. So, yeah. You know, I've got a Subaru WRX here in Pretza. Now this looks like, is this, okay, this is the Hawkeye by the looks of it. Um, yeah, it is a Hawkeye. Now it's got an STI hood on it, which maybe, I, I don't see any STI badging on it, but it's possible it's an actual STI. If so, that's a really badass car, but uh, prone to head gasket issues and burning oil issues. So you do have to watch out on these uh, Subaru flat fours. Um, continue along here. Nice little Dodge. Well, I mean, beater Dodge, but I always like these square body Dodges. Um, but I'm starting to fade out here, so I'm just going to get along to the really cool stuff down here, though. Because, you know, you may have seen before. So this is a 1971 Chevrolet Caprice. Now, in the... The high riding world of the donks or whatever, this is technically, if you put big wheels on this, this is considered a donk because of, this is when the term was coined, and it's because of the rear end and the slang of the badonk -a donk rear end of how wide it is, whatever. Now it's interesting because seeing these early 70s and late 60s Chevrolets, because in like the early 70s they put these, uh, for only a couple of years, you can get these uh, louvers in the trunk lid. Now, the problem with this and with every model, and they didn't realize this till after, was the exhaust from underneath, wherever it is, uh, there's no tailpipes on this, okay? <laughs> um, so, but basically the exhaust from underneath, it would kind of create a vacuum back here and go straight in through there and kind of suffocate you inside the cabin. So they didn't do that for very long. So yeah, it actually driven on the site. Oh, it's locked. All right, but this is oh sorry, no, it's it's an Impala, not a Caprice. Yeah, sorry, my bad. So the Caprice and the Impala were the same vehicle, except for the Impala was an uptrimmed Caprice, right? Super super cool. Um, you know, it's a sedan, but who cares? It's a beautiful car, and long are the days that sedans are only parts cars. Because you look at the condition of this thing, and it's just beautiful. You know, it's even got these uh, protective headlight covers on it. This little plastic, right? That's something that they did back in the day. Um, I've seen that on a couple vehicles. This one is cracked, which that, that's what they kind of did. But they did protect you from like rocks damaging your headlights. Not that these headlights are expensive. They're literally, I could probably pick up a full set of headlights for this thing for like 15 bucks a piece. So you're looking at 60 bucks for all the headlights to be replaced. But, and then finally, what we have here... So this is an Austin Westminster. Now, this thing is really, really neat. This was in the last auction, but I didn't get to preview it. So I guess they just talked it right back into the auction, or they didn't pay for it, maybe? It's possible, because that does happen, right? Austin Mark II Westminster. Um, now, this looks like it came from Edmonton. That's very cool. Now, it's kind of interesting to see how they did... The, um, so what this is actually is rear defrost, right? How they did this. Because now for reference with Chevrolet, which does it, is it there? Yes, it is. So on Chevrolets of this time period, they didn't have the electrics going through the back window. They just had a vent right there that blew hot air onto the back window, right? And that's how they did the rear defrost back then. So this is actually electric back here. Which, if this thing has Lucas Electronics, watch out. Those, that might not work. And they were quite famous for that sort of thing. Oh, it's, it's locked. That's okay. I'm not going to reach in and open it. That's 
one of these things if it is locked i just i don't like doing that but super cool you can see the horn ring there and everything stick shift very neat car if a tad rough like you can kind of see hey look oh this is fi fiberglass fenders okay interesting so this is probably very light like it's a small car you know that caprice is probably closer to like 4200 pounds give or take this thing is probably closer to like 2300 pounds but very cool and like you know there is it's not terrible like it has condition issues yeah like you can see some rust in this rear fender back here <laughs> oh, i can't say it hi just yell out the window seeing us over here but yeah very very cool um i don't think there's anything else actually there's something at the front but i didn't want to take some pictures of stuff so i want to splice some stuff together now here you go here's some really cool stuff just you know what the lineup of sort of the motorcycles and quads and everything sorry i'm not going through this quickly um or like i'm going through it quickly and whatever else all of these are in this auction like i mentioned i don't think there's anything else really like this is actually a little smaller of an auction than what they normally have so um they are full for any small miscellaneous items but actually when we go down here you'll see one really really cool um rig which actually i know my buddy teen mechanic would really love and when he comes out here he's probably going to take a look at this thing just like i am so here we have an old ford ltd coupe this thing is from the pictures it looks pretty mint now i do like the uh that looks like uh an ode to uh almost kim possible rufus there i i love kim possible honestly i have it as my text tone but anyways so yeah this is a 75 ford ltd 402 barrel and well it's got an exhaust system on it or at least some mufflers and man take a look at this thing it is mint damn near just a couple of minor flaws here and there but honestly i love the turbine wheels on it which now because these were I'm trying to think is this still even though yes okay this is a giant car is this the big ltd or did they downsize by then i don't think so i think this is still the big ltd and like look at how look at how massive this rear fender is just it's insane although looking at the paint so okay it's quite a bit of scratch isn't it like you might be able to buff this out and just make it shine like a diamond in a goat's ass but you know and like i don't know if you can see inside here look at that material right and there's no tears in there just very very beautiful and you can see all the stuff right here yeah it's been stored for a few years now they mentioned something yeah dual exhaust with C and now it says like horny wood mufflers, which I've never heard of them. Or at least that's what I think that says. Um, I thought they were purple horny mufflers, which, you know, would make it very loud potentially because they're like awesome glass packs. But yeah, and uh, that's definitely, pretty sure that's what that is. Pretty sure that's Rufus. Look at that. Awesome. Stuff from my childhood. Because yeah, Kim Possible was a cartoon when I was growing up in the 2000s. Pretty neat. But, uh, yeah, 2001 Disney. There you go. That's Kim Possible, definitely. But, uh, Rufus. So, yeah, and, like, and when you take a look at this thing, like, just the presence it has. Now, unfortunately, like, all... Because what happens when you put vinyl on, on a roof that's not prepared properly? You will get the rust over time, because it just traps moisture. That's all this does. And that's the one thing. With the vinyl top cars, they weren't prepped near as good there, so they didn't rust. But yeah, and like all this looks very familiar to like the other Fords that I've dealt with, with the Lincolns and stuff like that. This is very Lincoln-esque here. So a little trickle down effect into Ford. So yeah, very, very cool. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, you know, please give it a like. Comment on anything you may see down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as well, share it with your friends or family if uh, you might think that they might enjoy this. You know, you can see... My Mustang in the background, this is one of my cars, and then I have an 81 Mustang, and there's a 78 Civic project as well. So, uh, yeah, plenty of stuff on my channel. Um, you know, hope you guys are staying safe during COVID-19. Good luck with whatever you're working on, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye! <sighs>